Yeah, good afternoon. I mean, or good morning as the case may be. I'm back with the uh, continuation on our study around the discussion on managerial economics. Uh, on this second module, we are going to look at um, cost concept and then the concept of elasticity of demand. Uh, so you step back while I, while I share my screen and then we'll start. Yes, good morning, man concepts. We have done an introductory part to this course. Uh, we discuss um, we discuss the, int the introduction. The introduction where we talk about the explanation of the economics, what is economics and managerial economics, what are the objectives and importance of managerial economics, what are the um, areas of uh, managerial economics, what areas that actually managerial economic player, what role the managerial economic, economics make, uh, have in in, in business management <clears throat> and it is also discussed about uh, also discussed extensively about um, the uh, the difference between micro economic i mean uh, manager economics and and and, 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 and micro economics and we said that uh, managerial economy essentially um, essentially applied macro micro economics so um, uh, so demand concept demand is a common balance means desire for an object but in economy's demand is something more than this in economy's demand means the quantity of goods and services which a person can purchase with the crocosite of money amount of money so it's, we are talking here we are talking about you can demand anything i mean you can desire anything you may want anything but it, it may not be demand in economic term until it's back to money and ability and willingness to spend money on that commodity according to professor Huban, demand means the various quantities of goods and that will be purchased by time period at different prices in a given market. So, uh, demand for a commodity is life here, life here. Demand for a commodity is it is quantity which consumer is able and willing to buy at a various prices during a given period of time. Simply, demand is a behavior potential bias in a market. So, the behavior are they, is what's talking about what we are talking about here. The ability to to buy, to purchase, to demand, and purchase uh, certain goods. In the opinion of Stoney and Heck, demand in economics means demand backed up by enough money to pay for the goods demanded. So you can demand, you can want something, but it cannot be demand. It cannot, it, it may not mean, mean demand until you have the money and the willingness to spend the money for that opportunity. In other words, money means the desire backed by the willingness to buy a commodity and purchasing power to pay. Hence, desire alone is not enough. There must be other, there may be the necess, there may be the necessary purchasing for, i.e., cash to purchase it, and things like that. Like I said, I'm going to be a little bit fast. You have the material so you can read it in detail. Now, what is demand analysis? Demand analysis means an attempt to determine the factors affecting the demand for of a commodity or service as measure such factors and their influence. So we know we know that um, there's something you did in your elementary economics, which is called um, the demand analysis includes a study of low of demand, demand schedule, demand curve, and demand forecast. Main objective demand analysis are to determine the factors affecting the demand. What are those factors? Price, price of other commodities, test and preferences, weather, economic situation, and so many other things. To measure the elasticity of demand, we got the next topic we're going to discuss is elasticity. If demand changes because of price and by what percentage? I said change. The, to forecast the demand. Now we'll also do demand estimation and demand forecasting as well. To increase the demand, to allow the causes of uh, and to allocate the resources efficiently. These are what demand analysis is all about. Law of demand. The law of demand is known at the first law in the market. Law of demand shows the relation between price and quantity demanded of a commodity in the market. In the words of Marshall, the amount demanded increases with a fall in price and diminishes with the, with the rise in price. I think this is a common thing. Everybody knows that the higher the price, the lower the demand. The lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. People will buy more of a commodity at a lower price than, than at a higher price. Or you can say people will buy less of a commodity, the higher it is price. 
According to Samuelson, law of demand states that people will buy more at a lower price and buy less at a higher price. So, now that's what we call independent demand curve. This demand curve we are going to discuss is derived from what is called individual demand schedule. Demand schedule is a table that shows various quantity of commodity purchase at a given price. So it will show you how the quantity is increasing as prices are coming down or how the quantity is decreasing as prices are going up. So that's why it is when it's plotted in the graph, it shows this downward sloping demand curve, indicating that the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. If you look at it, at the price of 10, only one unit was demanded. At the price of two, six units were demanded. So the higher, the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. That exact demand schedule that has been converted into um, uh, into a demand curve, a downward sloping demand curve. So a demand curve DD shows the inverse relation between price and demand of Apple. Due to this inverse relationship, demand curve slopes downward from left to right. This kind of slope is also called negative slope because it's a negative relationship. You know what? It is a positive relationship. As price goes up, quantity demanded will go up. That's an exceptional demand. We'll talk about that later. But for this case, it's a normal demand curve. The higher the price, the lower the quantity demand. That's why the demand curve slopes downward. Then, 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 then the summation of all individual demand curves. Let's say for the Apple, we need to use an example. You see the demand, individual demand curve and market demand curve are the same. They are all downward sloping demand, uh, down, 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 downward sloping curve. Now, but the problem is for the market demand curve, you assume that are 1 million people that go to the market to buy Apple. So the demand curve for each of those individual households, when you sum it up, you have the market demand curve. Now, what you look at to know the distinguishing feature between demand, you can see that the quantities demanded are much higher here than they were at the individual um, the demand curve at the same price, because this is an aggregation of all the demand uh, for, for each household. Now, what are the assumptions? What are the assumptions that gets the low demand? The low demand is based on certain basic assumptions. The, they are as follows. There is no change in consumer status and preferences. So people don't change their, their preferences. Income should remain constant. Prices of other goods should not change. There should be no substitute for the commodity. What this assumption means is what you hear in economies as ceteris paribus, all things being equal. So that means all these factors are remain, remain constant. Then the law of demand will suffice. Otherwise, if anything happens to any, any of these assumptions, then probably the law of demand will not be able to, uh, will not be appropriate in that case. Why does demand curve slope downward? One reason is law of diminution marginal utility. Utility economics means the benefits you drive for, for consuming a commodity, for consuming a service. As the consumer buys more and more of the commodity, the marginal utility will additionally falls. It's just like saying if you pump very tasty, the first bottle of coke you take gives you maximum benefit, maximum satisfaction. By the time you take the second, the benefits you drive from the first has reduced. By the time you take the third, in fact, by the time you go to the fifth, probably you want to commit. So that's why as the benefit is coming down, so also the price you are willing to pay is also coming down. That's what the domination of marginal utility is talking about. The principle of equal marginal utility. Consumer identity his purchases in such a way that the marginal utility is equal in all purchases. That means somebody has money, 1,000 Naira. He wants to do so many things. So to allocate, he has to allocate that 1,000 Naira to give him the same benefit if he has used it in each of those various things that he wants to purchase. And then income effect. When the price of commodity falls, the real income of the consumer will increase. He will spend this increased income either to buy additional quantity of the commodity or buy another commodity. That means if you wake up now to find that the bottle of coke is not selling for, let's say, 100 naira, the big bottle of coke. When you go there with your 150 naira pocket, which means you have 15 naira more. You have 15 naira more. So it means if there's another coke, smaller, the smaller bottle of coke, so low, the solo, the 20 or whatever is 15. Then you can be able to buy big and small rather than buy. So the increase of quantity of Coca Cola demanded increase because your net income has also increased, what you call income effect. That's also what's called substitution effect. When the price of tea falls, it becomes cheaper. Therefore, the consumer substitutes this commodity for coffee. This leads to an increase in the demand for tea. You see that tea and coffee are supposed to be substitute. You either tea, take tea, or you take coffee. Now, if the price of tea falls, 
it means you want to buy more of tea than coffee. So the quantity of coffee will reduce, but the quantity of tea will increase. That's a substitution effect. And then different uses of a commodity. Some commodities have several uses. If the price of the commodity is high, its use will be restricted only for important purposes. If you want the price of tomato is high, it will be used only for cooking purpose. When it is cheaper, it will be used for preferring jam, pickle, and things like that. Now, what I'm saying, as long as a commodity has several uh, uses, now its consumption is determined by its price. You consume it on only necessities if the price is high, but you can use it for anything if the price is low. Then psychology of the people. Psychology people, psychologically, people buy more of a commodity when it is price force, which is called price effect. I oh, this thing, I can't. It's, it's, it's cheap now, so let me buy more. It's, it's normal, it's normal um, human behavior. When you know something, something is 20 naira, now you find that it's 10 or 15 naira, so okay, let me buy two instead of buying one. You get the point. So that, that, that's, that's what is called price effect. Then, um, the, 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 I'm not saying this one, the, this other one. Sorry for the black line on my screen. Now, there are exceptions to the law of demand. And it comes with what is called exceptional, exceptional demand curve. The basic feature of the demand curve is negative sloping, but there are some exceptions to this, i.e. in certain circumstances, demand curve may slope upward from left to right, which is positive slope. This minimum may be due to given paradox. The given, given good are imperial goods, which is an exception to the law of demand. When the price of imperial goods falls, the poor will buy less, less, and vice versa. You see, take a, take a case of undergraduate students, for example. I will use you because you are a master's student, most of you are working. But look at undergraduate orders in secondary schools. When they have a small amount of money, they go to, let's say, Kasombra, she went down boutique to buy second-hand clothes, second-hand shoes, second-hand everything. But as soon as they graduate, they start working, they start earning income. Because their income has increased, they will reduce their purchase of second-hand and start buying branding, clothes, and, and other, and other apparatus. So automatically, as income increases, Less of and less of certain goods are purchased because of their imperial st status. It's just like somebody strolling to buy uh, a second hand car and then he now gets a very big position in a very big company and then he can afford a new car. Definitely, he's not going to buy a Tokomo. So, such goods that are defined as giving goods, goods of imperial quality, the higher the price, the higher the quantity people will purchase. People don't buy things when they're very, very low because. They only have enough money when their status is, 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 is increased. And then Beblen or demonstration effect. According to Beblen, rich people buy certain goods because of it is social distinction or prestige. That's why you see somebody can buy, can take 20 million, 30 million to buy a car. It's just a demonstration effect. So the more expensive those vehicles are, the more expensive those articles are, the more the rich, the super rich will go for them rather than the ones that the poor are using. And then, and in such cases, so you see, as the price of the commodity is increasing, so also demand by the super rich is also increasing. So the demand curve will not be upward sloping, positive slope. The higher the price, the higher the quantity demanded. And sometimes ignorance. That's also what is called speculative effect. When the price of commodity is increasing, then the consumer buy more of it because of the fear that it will increase still further. Imagine what happens if you go out now to your car and you see one, two, three, four petrol stations with a queue. You, begin to, you just tell you that ah, there may be a queue for us, so let me just fill my tank. You just go in to fill your tank. You see, increase the demand, just speculating that 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 uh, prices might increase. So you make Google go, and then you go and get your jerry can buy for your for your generator and things like that. That's what speculative effect means. And then PR shortage, or PR shortage, they are all talking about the same thing. And then and any other things and brand loyalty, some people are still stick to places and people stick to MTN despite the fact that MTN can be very eclectic and frustrating. But because of that, uh, people are still to So you can see the demand curve is loving offward. That means the higher the price, the higher the quantity demanded of such. So that this is an exception to the law of demand. The law of demand said the higher the price, the lower the quantity. But in exceptional cases, it's a reverse. It's a reverse demand curve. The lower the, the higher the lower the, the higher the price, the higher the quantity demanded. They are moving in the same direction. Linear relationship. Whereas in proper in normal demand is negative relationship. <sighs> the changes in demand. Now, there are two things here that I want you to understand. There are change, what is called change in demand. That's what called change in quantity demanded. 
Demand of a commodity may change. It may increase or decrease due to changes in certain factors. These factors are called determinants of demand. These factors include price of commodity. Now, in a, if you follow the law of demand, what you see in a law of demand graphically is change in quantity demanded. The higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. The lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. So it's movement along the same demand curve. That's what is called change in quantity demanded. But here we're going to talk about change in the demand itself due to certain factors. Price of a commodity, nature of commodity, income and wealth of consumer, test and preferences of consumer, and things like that. Now, in this case, demand for a commodity itself changes not due to price, but due to certain factors other than price. At the same price, but more quantity are purchased, or at the same price, less quantity are purchased. Let me give you a clear example. As we're entering into the hot season, people will buy less and less of warm clothing simply because the weather has changed. So changing weather affected demand for warm clothing, not the price. The price may remain the same, the price may even come down, but people will not patronize that. So you see the demand curve shifting. Demand curve for cold items increases, but the demand curve for warm clothing decreases at the same price. So that's what you call a bodily shift of the demand curve, either to the, to the left indicating a decrease or to the right indicating an, an increase. So please get this thing very clear. The distinction is between a shift, in, a shift in demand curve, which is called change in demand, or a movement along the same curve, which is caused by price. Then there are different types of demand. That's what you call joint demand. When two or more commodities are jointly demanded at the same time to satisfy a particular want, it's called joint or complementary demand. And I'm giving you guys the example is milk and sugar, tea, or for making tea and things like that. If the more people drink tea, the more the demand for sugar. In fact, as people become addicted to tea, then the demand for sugar will increase, the demand for coffee will increase, the demand for crema will increase because they are all associated commodities to taking tea. You can take tea either as tea, as tea, or tea, as coffee, or tea, like whatever. Composite demand, the demand for a commodity which can be put for several uses. Like demand for electricity. We needed electricity simply because it's not only for lighting, even for facilitating the use of our technology to produce this, this lecture, for so many other things. Then you have direct and drive demand. Demand for a commodity which is for a direct consumption is called direct demand. Food, clothing directly, you demand them, everybody will demand them. And then when the commodity is demanded as a result of demand of another commodity, it's called drive demand. Like demand for tires depends on demand of vehicles. The more vehicles we have, the more demand for tires become. Or the more vehicles we have, the more the demand for uh, petrol increases. And then industry demand and company demand. It's just like the industry demand and company demand just equated to individual demand and market demand. That's what it means. Industry now is like a market. Demand, a company demand is like an individual, sorry, uh, an individual demand. Now, from there, we are going moving into what's called elasticity of demand. Come here, let me see. Just a minute. I hope I did not jump something. Because I've not shown you the. Now, extension and contraction of demand. This is just explaining um, how demand increase or decrease. Uh, move this movement along the same curve. If the price comes down, more quantity will increase. If the price goes up, less quantity will be purchased. Now, this is what I explained earlier: shift in demand or increase or decrease in demand. That's it's caused by change in demand, change of factors affecting demand. You can see that the original demand curve is DD. At giving price, stepping price. But then demand, when demand increases due to any of the factors we listed, the demand curve will shift forward, indicating more quantities purchased at the same price. And if any of the factors could cause a decrease in demand, like I gave you an example of cold items and, and cold um, during hot season and then cold warm clothes during um, cold season. So you can see that the demand curve will shift downward to D, D2, D2, indicating a lower quantity demanded.
I will talk about this joint uh, different types of demands. So. We are done with demand concept. We are now we're going to take a look at elasticity of demand. We told you that if quantity demanded changes with the change in price, that if something is being sold for 10 naira, when the price is raised 15 naira, we expect the quantity demanded to reduce because the price has gone off. Or if the price is 10 naira and the price now becomes 7 naira, we expect the quantity demanded to increase. But by what percentage? That's what elasticity does. And that's one of the most important concepts in managerial economics because managerial decision is based on the elasticity of demand for the commodity the farm is producing and selling. The load demand explains the directions of change in demand. The fall in price leads to an increase in quantity demanded and vice versa. But the hotel has the rate at which the demand curve, the demand changes to change in price. The concept of elasticity, this concept explains the relationship between a change in price and consequent change in quantity demanded. In a nutshell, it shows the rate at which changes in demand takes place. Now elasticity has, can be defined as a degree of responsiveness of a quantity demanded to a change in price. Thus, it represents the rate of change in quantity demanded due to a change in price. There are mainly three types of elasticity of demand, and that's what we are going to discuss. Price elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand, and cross elasticity of demand. Now we take each one of them separately. Price elasticity of demand. Price elasticity of demand measures the change in quantity demanded to a change in price. It's the ratio of percentage change in quantity demanded to a percentage change in price. This can be measured by the following formula. And the price elasticity is proportional change in quantity, proportional change in quantity demanded over proportional change in price. And if you want to do algebra, you do Q2 minus Q1 all over Q1. I'm thinking, I'm sure when you read through this thing, you will understand what it means. So it's just what by what percentage change, quantity demanded change as a result of change in price. There are five types of price elasticity of demand. Degree, the degree of elasticity of demand, such as perfectly elastic demand, perfectly inelastic demand, Relatively elastic demand, relatively inelastic demand, and unitary elastic demand. We'll look at them briefly. You can read them. They are very simple concepts. Perfectly elastic demand, infinitely elastic. When a small change in price leads to infinite change in quantity demand, it is called perfectly elastic demand. In this case, the demand curve is horizontal straight line as given below. Look at the line, the arrowed line, the demand curve, DD. Any change in price upward will mean zero demand. Any change in price low will mean infinitely infinity demand. So you cannot alter the price in this situation. Any movement of price will lead to either complete abandon of the product or purchasing everything in place in the market. Now, there's also perfectly inelastic demand. Would you remember the first time we did perfectly elastic? The demand curve is horizontal. In this case, even a large change in price fails to bring about a change in quantity demand. Either change in price will not affect the quantity demanded and quantity remains the same, whether the change in price, whether whatever change of price, here demand curve will be vertical line. So you can see the DD line is vertical. Whether the price is 10 naira or 20 naira, 30 naira, quantity demanded remain the same because the demand curve is static. In most cases, the closest example you use for this is life dependent product. Like say somebody who is diabetic and is hooked to insulin. It's a matter of life and death. No matter the price of insulin, diabetes will always demand for insulin. So regardless of the price. These are two extreme ends of the elasticity concept. Now we have a relatively elastic demand, where a small change in price leads a very big change in quantity demand. You can see between P and P1, it assumes a very small percentage. But then look at the increase in quantity demanded. Now, here the elasticity is greater than one. That means this product, a product with this kind, is very sensitive. Likewise, if you increase the price, then the quantity demanded will reduce significantly. But a small reduction in price, look at how it leads to huge increase in quantity demanded. That is also relatively inelastic demand. Here, quantity demanded changes less than proportional change in price. A large change in price leads a small change in demand. In this case, demand curve will be stiffer, and elasticity of, price, elasticity of demand will be less than one. Look at it. Look at the huge increase, decrease in price, but look at 
the little increase in quantity demanded from Q to Q1. The change in price is from P to P1, but the increase in quantity is just Q to Q1. Look at the size. That's why I say relatively inelastic. So the price has less effect on this type of demand for commodity. And that's the last one, unit elasticity of demand, or what you call unitary elastic. Here, the change in demand is exactly equal to the change in price. When both are equal, elasticity of demand is said to be one. That's why it's called unitary. You increase price, you increase price by 10% and quantity demanded increase by 10%. You reduce price by 10%, I mean, you increase price by 10%, quantity demanded reduced by 10%, one-on-one. -on -one. That's what's called, called unitary elastic. Now, this price elasticity, now we take um, income elasticity of demand. Income elasticity demand shows the change in quantity demanded as a result of the change in consumer's income. Income elasticity of demand may be stated in the form of a formula below, proportional change in quantity demanded over proportional change in income. So as people income changes, we said if people income increases, they will increase their demand for a given commodity. But by what percentage? That's what income elasticity is, is, is trying to estimate. And that's what is why it's important to business decision is if the economy is doing well, people are getting more income. It means that demand for goods and services will increase. So if income increases, how will it affect demand for a given commodity? That would, that's, that the managerial economist managers require this knowledge so that will tell them how much more product product can they increase? How would sell increase relative to increase in national income generally? Income elasticity demand is mainly of three types, zero income elasticity, negative income elasticity, and positive income elasticity. Now, in the case of zero income elasticity, in this case, quantity demand remains the same, even though money income increases. Simple. There's no change. People don't spend more money because of, because they have earned more money. Then the negative income elasticity, in this case, when income increases, quantity demanded falls, e.g. imperial goods. We have spoken of imperial goods. People will demand less as their income increases. Then positive income elasticity. In this case, an increase in income may lead to an increase in the quantity demanded. I.e. when income rises, demand also rises. So elasticity is greater than zero. This can be further classified into three types. Unit elasticity, demand changes in the same proportion to change in income. You know, income elasticity greater than quantity than, than, than the unity and increase in inc income brings about a more than proportional increase in quantity demand, i.e. when people get more money, they spend they demand for more commodity. So elasticity is greater than one. And then when income increase elasticity less than unity, when income increases, quantity demanded increases, but by far less than by less than the increase in, in income. That means you have um, elasticity is less than one. Now, cross elasticity of demand. The cross elasticity of demand is a proportion change in the quantity demanded of a commodity. It responds to a change in the price of another related commodity. Related commodity may be either substitute or complement. Example of substitute commodities are tea and coffee. We said you cannot demand the two simultaneously. You cannot consume the two simultaneously. Let's say that. So it's either tea or coffee. There are people who don't take coffee, they only take tea. There are people who take only, take only coffee, they don't take tea. Example of complementary goods are car and petrol. Once you buy a car, you know you have to be demanding, you have to be consuming petrol. So they, they go together. That's complementary. Cross elasticity money can be calculated by the following formula proportional change in quantity demanded of a commodity over proportional change in the price of unrelated commodity. So you let the change in price of a commodity to the quantity demanded of another commodity. Now, this will be either their, their complement or their substitute. We'll look at each one of them. If the cross elasticity is positive, that means it's greater than one. The commodities are said to be substitute. If the cross elasticity is negative, the commodities are complements. The substitute goods, tea and coffee, have positive cross elasticity because the increase in the price of tea may increase the demand of coffee and the, com and the consumer may shift from consumption of tea to coffee. So once it's complement complementary, then you have uh, a positive cross elasticity. When you increase the price of one, the quantity demanded of the other will increase. Complementary goods, car and petrol. Car and petrol have negative cross elasticity because increase in the price of car will reduce the quantity of demand demanded of petrol. Because less and less people will be able to buy cars and less and less petrol will be demanded because of less and less number of cars available on the street. The concept of cross elasticity assists the manager in the process of decision making for fixing the price of a product which have close substitute or complements. Cross elasticity is very useful. 
So we're not discussing this just because of the concept, we're trying to focus on the relevance to managerial decision. Now, advertisement is self demand. Now, you know companies spend a lot of money in advertisements. Take, for instance, the telephone companies, the, the, the GSM service companies. You see them always advertising, spending huge amount of money creating billboards and, 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 and advertisements on radio and television on every available space. They do that because they want to promote sales. They want to increase their sales. Because in economics, when we come to production theory, we we'll look at, we we'll show, we'll show you that. As long as a company is producing and making profit per unit, then it should continue to produce until when it is cost of production of one unit is equal to the profit at the price of that commodity, then it stop production. So as long as that's emerging in product to one additional unit, then the company will continue. So they want to see how they can increase sales relative to the amount of money they are spending on promotional activities, on advertisement activities. So advertisement, electricity of demand, promotional electricity of demand, measure the responsibility of demand due to a change in advertisement and other promotional expenses. This can be measured by the following formula. Advertisement is seeking promotion, proportional increase in sales over proportional increase in advertisement expenditure. How much, by what percentage is sales increasing as a result of the amount of money spent on advertisement? There are various terms of advertisement, advertisement is seeking. They are type of commodity. Electricity will be higher for luxury, new product, growing product, ETC. Market share, the larger the market share of the firm, the lower will be the promotional elasticity. If a company is having a very large share, so what drives demand is really not much of advertisement, but because of share size in the market, like advertisements. They are dominant because they have the market, the largest market share. And the rivals, rivals reaction. If the rivals react to increase in firms' advertisement by increasing their own advertisement expenditure, it will reduce the advertisement elasticity of the firm. And that's what happens between MTN and say Airtel or MTN and Glue. They keep outstripping each other in terms of advertisement expenditure. So the advertisement elasticity is very small simply because rivals, they rivals each other and they spend more money against than like each other. The state of the economy. If economic conditions are good, the consumers are more likely to respond to the advertisement of the firm. Like now in the country, no matter the advertisement, because people don't have money, they may not increase their purchase or their consumption of a given commodity. Now, advertisement as it helps in the process of decision making. It helps to, to, to in deciding the optimum level of advertisement and promotional cost. If the advertisement is high, it is profitable to spend more on advertisement. So, depending on the condition of the, the, the manager, needs also this to see whether, whether we need to spend more money on, 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 on advertisement or not. If we are spending money and sales are not increasing, are not increasing, then it means we are just wasting our money. So we have to reprioritize. Now, what business decisions are taking place are a lot of income elasticity. One, the cost of income elasticity can be utilized for the purposes of taking vital business decisions. A businessman can rely on the following facts. If income elasticity is greater than zero, but less than one, sales of the product will increase, but slower than the general economic growth. If income elasticity is greater than one, sales of product will increase more rapidly than the general economic growth. Firms whose, whose demand functions have high income elasticity have good growth opportunities in an expanding economy. Now, each firm, that it is product response to in, people respond to buy more of a product if the economy is doing well. It means if the condition in the economy, if the macroeconomic conditions are very good, that firm will take advantage, will say, make more sales than the usual. This concept helps managers take correct decision during business cycle and also help them forecasting the effect of changes in income on, on demand. Now, this is the reality. This is the reality. I need this concept because it helps in actually say because you know you know what we call business cycle is what is called boom depression the cycle like the economy is doing very well it will go into recession it will go into depression and then it start going back into 
boom, expanding economic activities. So in each of those cycles, this income assisted demand will guide the manager in either fixing price, in either production, in either quantity supply or not for whatever. Then importance of elasticity. The cost of elasticity of demand is much of practical importance. Production. Producers generally decide their production level on the basis of demand for their product. So they need elasticity. Hence, elasticity of demand helps to, to fix the level of output. Depending on all the positive and negative um, 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 competitions we said they arrive at. Price fixation. Each seller under monopoly and impact of competition has to be has to take into account the elasticity of demand while fixing the, their price. If the demand for the product is inelastic, he can fix a higher price, no problem. But if the demand for the product is elastic, then he cannot increase price. He probably has to increase quantity just to be able to get more, more revenue. Assuming that for every quantity produced and sold, profit can be made. Distribution, elasticity and determination of rewards for factors of production. For example, if the demand for labor is inelastic, trading can raise wages also. International trade, public finance, nationalization, and all that, you can read them, they are very simple to, 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 to comprehend. Now, there are also determinants of elasticity, just like we had determinants of demand. Elasticity demand varies from product to product, time to time, and market to market. This is due to influence of other various factors. They are nature of the commodity, availability or range of substitutes, extent of variety of uses, uh, postponement or urgency of demand, income level, amount of money spent on the commodity, durability of the commodity, and all that and all that. You know, so uh, that's why some people are saying, okay, China is using a strategy of doing low quality products so that you demand them more. You buy TV after one or two years, it has one IC that got burnt and then you can't find it, so you junk it and then you buy another one, something like that. So that 